Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. Today, we are going to talk about one of the interesting topics in mathematics, which is set theory. Without further ado, let us start. Set theory is defined as a branch of mathematics that deals with the properties of well-defined collection of objects, which may or may not be of a mathematical nature such as numbers or functions. Let us take for example this image. What can you see? That's right, these are planets. These planets that belong in our solar system are a collection of things. In mathematics, a collection of things is called a set. Another example of a set is the items you use when cooking. This includes a spatula, a pan, a knife, a pillar, and so on. You write sets inside curly brackets like this. But did you know you can also have sets of numbers? Sets such as a set of whole numbers which can be written as the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, or a set of prime numbers written as the set of 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. We can identify sets by either describing them. Here are some examples of sets defined by describing the contents. First, we have the set of all the vowels. Another example we have is the set of all even numbers. In this set, it comprises all the even integers in the number system including the negative and the positive even integers. And then we have this example, the set of the colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and purple. This set is the set of all the colors in the rainbow. Easy, right? But, take note of this, a set simply specifies its contents, order is not important, which means that set represented by 1, 2, 3 is just equivalent to the set 3, 1, 2. Okay, now let's talk about the simple notation for sets. We simply list each member separated by a comma, and then put some curly brackets around the whole thing, just like what is shown in the figure. The curly brackets are sometimes called set brackets or braces. The first number, which is number 3, is called an element of the set. Numbers 6, 9, and 12 are also elements of the set. Again, each element in the set is separated by a comma. The three dots mean that the set goes on forever, or this example is an infinite set. Speaking of infinite sets, did you know that a set has two different types? That's right. A set can either be a finite set and an infinite set. First, let us define a finite set. We can say that a set is a finite set when it is the kind of set that has a finite number of elements. This means that one could, in principle, count and finish counting. Let us take for example the set of all the colors of the rainbow. A rainbow has seven colors. We have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Since we can count the elements of this set, then this set is considered as a finite set. Another example would be the set of all fruits native to the Philippines. This set is also finite since it has stated a specific country for the kinds of fruits asked. Now let us define an infinite set. An infinite set is a set whose elements cannot be counted. This means that an infinite set is one that has no last element. An example would be is the set of all positive integers which is a multiple of 3. This is an infinite set because all positive integers which are multiples of 3 would be endless. When we are referring to the number line, recall that the number line extends to infinity which means that this set is boundless with respect to the positive side. Another example is the set of all negative integers. This is an infinite set because again, when referring to the number line, Negative integers are boundless with respect to the negative side. You may ask, what do sets have to do with mathematics, right? Well, when we define a set, all we have to specify is a common characteristic who says we can do so with numbers, right? Sets by themselves seem pretty pointless, but it's only when we apply sets in different situations do they become the powerful building blocks in mathematics. Always remember that when talking about sets, it is fairly standard to use capital letters to represent the set and lowercase letters to represent an element in that set. For example, 
A is a set and A is an element in A. Also when we say an element A is in a set A, we use the symbol which is read as an element of. And if something is not in a set, use the symbol which is read as not an element of. Another example is this. Set A is the set of A, B, and C. We can see that A is an element of A, but 1 is not an element of A. Two sets are equal if they are precisely the same elements. This pertains to the equality of sets, but some sets may not look equal at first glance. Let us take this for example. Are A and B equal where A is the set of all positive integers between 2 and 8? And B is equal to the set of 7, 5, 3, 4, and 6? Let's check. They both contain 3. They both contain 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we have checked every element of both sets. So that means they are equal. Remember that the equal sign is used to show equality. So we write A is equal to B. When we define a set, if we take pieces of that set, we can form what is called a subset. In general, A is a subset of B if and only if every element of A is in B. For example, the set of 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. A subset of this is 3, 9, and 15. Another subset could be 6 and 9, or even just the number 9, and etc. But 1 and 9 is not a subset since it has the element 1 which is not in the parent set. Now let's talk about proper subsets. In general, A is a proper subset of B if and only if every element of A is in also in B and there exists at least one element in B that is not in A. A proper subset is to make sure that A is not a proper subset of itself. We say that B must have at least one extra element. Take for example, the set 246 is a subset of 246, but it is not a proper subset of 246. However, 246 is a proper subset of 2468 because the element 8 is not in the first set. Also take note that when A is a proper subset of B, then it is also a subset of B. When we say that A is a subset of B, we write, or we can say that A is not a subset of B by, when we talk about proper subsets, we take out the line underneath. It becomes, read as A is a proper subset of B, or if we want to say the opposite, it becomes and be read as A is not a proper subset of B. Now, let's talk about null sets or empty sets. Yes, you heard it right. An empty set also exists. And when we talk about null sets, its definition is already by its name. It means that there aren't any elements in it. Not one, but zero. It is represented by this symbol or by an empty brace. Now, let's talk about the order or the cardinality of sets. The number of elements in a set is the cardinality of that set. The cardinality of the set A is often notated as the symbol or read as an N of A. A finite set has a finite order of cardinality and infinite set has an infinite order or cardinality. For finite sets, the order or cardinality is the number of elements. For infinite sets, all we can say is that the order is infinite. For example, the set of 5, 10, 15, and 20 has an order or cardinality of 4. The set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 has an order or cardinality of 5. The set Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet as an order or cardinality of seven. And that would be the end of it. Easy, right? Well, I hope to see you again next time for more interesting and fun topics only here in Easy Engineering. We make engineering topics easy and fun for you.